Bugs Bunny, too many carrots. Bugs Bunny smacked his lips. Petunia, he said, your plum preserves are just peachy. Thank you, Bugs, said Petunia. I hope the jam judges at the fair tomorrow agree with you. Bugs was very busy. He was too lazy to enter the county fair contest himself, but he loved giving orders to everyone else. Bugs leaned out of the kitchen window. Porky, keep going, he shouted. You've got 38 more seconds to do push-ups. Poor Porky, sighed Petunia. Do you really think he can swing that heavy hammer hard enough to ring the bell and win the prize tomorrow? Sure, if he wants to win badly enough, Bugs replied. Setting his stopwatch, he looked out the window again, then blew the whistle. Take only a ten second break before you start jogging, he reminded Porky. Just then, little Cicero ran in, demanding, Petunia, I need another egg. That's three eggs you've broken, scolded Petunia. I have to have eggs to practice with so I can win the race tomorrow, Cicero explained. What race? asked Bugs. The egg and spoon race at the fair, said Cicero, reaching for the last egg in the carton. We'll hard boil it first, suggested Bugs, putting the egg into a pan of water on the stove. Then if it falls off your spoon, it'll just crack. But it's more fun when they break, Cicero protested, watching his egg in the pan. Thank you, Bugs, Petunia laughed as Bugs Bunny bounded out of the door, again blowing his whistle. It can't be f ten seconds already, groaned Porky. It was ten seconds ten seconds ago, said Bugs. On your feet, go. Be back in five and a half minutes. No stops. I'm timing you. As Porky jogged down the road, Bugs stretched out under a tree. He was just dozing off when a familiar voice called over the fence. What race are you trying to win? Ah, uh, what's up, Doc? cried Bugs, looking over the fence at Elmer Fudd's garden. Hey, your carrots are up. Want me to taste test them for you? Reluctantly, Elmer handed him one. I'm hoping to sell the whole crop at the fair tomorrow. Yummy, said Bugs, reaching for another carrot. Only one to taste tester, said Elmer. And don't tell me you're practicing for a carrot eating contest. Wish I'd thought of that, Bugs grinned. I never get enough carrots. The pie-eating contest is the only eating event at the fair, said Elmer. And Uncle Hoggy Towel always wins, Bugs was remembering the other fairs. Why don't you challenge him? Elmer asked. With your appetite, you might just beat him. Bugs thought it over. Well, I haven't any jam stand or crops to sell. And you're too lazy to get into shape, Elmer added. But my appetite is always in shape, bragged Bugs. Thanks for the suggestion, Doc. When Porky gets back, tell him to chin himself 18 times on the crabapple tree. I'm off to sign up for the pie-eating contest. But when Bugs got to the fairground, he found that the contest had been cancelled. It's an outrage, thundered Uncle Hoggy Tall. You've won for eight years straight, snapped Judge Turtle. This year no one has challenged you, so we're cancelling the contest. Wait! said Bugs. I challenge Uncle Hoggy Tall if I get to choose the kind of pie we eat. Don't you like blueberry pie? asked the judge. I like carrot pie better, Bugs answered, smiling hungrily. You want us all to eat carrot pies for the contest? rumbled Uncle Hoggy Tall. Well, if that's okay with you, Judge Turtle and the champ here, added Bugs, draping a friendly arm around Uncle Hoggy Tall's shoulder. After they agreed, Bugs signed up for the contest. The next day, when the fair opened, an excited crowd gathered around a table stacked high with carrot pies. Would Bugs Bunny be able to out-eat the all-time champion Uncle Hoggy Tall? The champ arrived first. He sat down, tied a big napkin around his neck, and picked up a fork. Then Bugs came, waved to the crowd, greeted Uncle Hoggy Tall, tied on a napkin, and picked up a fork. Start eating now, shouted Judge Turtle. It's really unfair, murmured Bugs happily, chomping on his third pie. I'm so wild about carrots. Then he noticed Uncle Hoggy Tall smacking his lips over his fourth carrot pie. Nom nom, better than blueberries, commented the champ. Meanwhile, Little Cicero easily won their egg and spoon race, 
and Bugs and Uncle Hoggy Tall kept eating. Petunia proudly accepted a blue ribbon from the jam judges for her peachy plum preserves, and Bugs and Uncle Hoggy Tall ate on. Bong! Porky swung the hammer, rang the bell, and won first prize for the highest score. And Bugs and Uncle Hoggy Tall each started on his 18th carrot pie. Must be something special about carrot pies, said Judge Turtle. Fourteen blueberry pies are the most anyone's ever eaten before. And that was why Elmer Fudd sold all of his carrot crop. His customers wanted to bake carrot pies. In the middle of his nineteenth pie, Uncle Hoggy Tall untied his napkin and laid down his fork with a sigh. <sighs> I know when I'm licked, he said. Judge Turtle raised Bugs Bunny's arm. The winner and new champion pie eater, he announced. The crowd roared and Bugs hiccuped. For once in his life, he didn't want to see another carrot ever again. But his grateful friends didn't realise this. Porky and Petunia were the first to visit Bugs after he got home. It was your training that helped me win, said Porky. After you called my plum preserves peachy, <laughs> I added just a dab of peach, said Petunia. That's what made me win the blue ribbon. Together, they handed Bugs a big box. I baked you a carrot cake, beamed Petunia. Mmm, my favourite, said Bugs feebly. Thank you. When Elmer Fudd came calling, Bugs said, I hear you sold all of your carrots. Glad to hear it. Thanks to you, everyone wants carrot pies, said Elmer. But I saved some just for you, three bushels of the best ones. Ah, uh, lovely, gulped Bugs. Thanks, Doc. Later, when Bugs saw little Cicero coming, he tried to hide behind the nearest tree, but it wasn't fast enough. The winner of the egg and spoon race handed him a big brown paper bag. Bugs peeked in. Carrot candy, he croaked. Then he lay down under the nearest tree to think about something very strange. Too many carrots are too many carrots, he realised, even for the greatest carrot eater of them all.